2012 high paper, paper one. Multiple choice, as it used to be known before it became objective set. And what does it say? The consolation gives you an initial value, little rule to work it out, you have to work out U2, you're at U0 just now, so you need to get to U1 first. So that'll just be three times what you've got, plus four, three and four is seven. Now there is seven, same pattern again, three times the seven, plus the four, that's 21 and four is 25. Answer 25, that would be C. Two, gradient of the tangent, differentiate. So it'll be multiplied by the power, take one of the power, and that'll just be the coefficient. Evaluate it at x equals negative two. <coughs> So the gradient would be 3 times negative 2 squared. What's that little negative lurking in there? Makes a difference to your square now anyway, because that's going to be 4. 3 4s are 12. 12 take away 6 is 6. Answer 6, D. 3. If this quadratic is written in this form, that's completing the square, what's the value of Q, the number you get at the end? Well, the 14's the bogey, so it's just this part I'm going to use to complete it, so it'd have to be x minus 3, because twice the product's got to be 6. Squaring that creates an extra plus 9. 3 squared is 9, so I have to take that off. So I've got x minus 3 squared minus 9 plus 14, so that'd be plus 5. So that q should be 5. 5 being answer b. Question four, what's the gradient of that line? Well, it's obviously negative, but they're all negative, that doesn't help. Well, that's just gonna come from that usual thing. The gradient's the same as the tangent of the angle, but the angle from the positive x all the way around. So it's gonna be the same as the tangent of 150. Now, what's 150 in terms of your acute angles? Well, 150 sweeps you round to here, leaving you with 30. All sine, tan, cos, so it's negative. So tan 150 is the same as the negative of the tan of 30. Now what's the tan of 30? Your little triangle will tell you that. 30 degree triangle, that's the short side. Tangent of 30 is 1 upon root 3. So I've got negative 1 upon root 3. Negative 1 upon root 3 is answer B. Question 5. A right angle triangle. Find the value of the cos of double the angle. Double angle formula. Choose 1. I'll just use the 2 cos squared minus 1, why not? 2 cos squared a minus 1. 2 times cos of a, adjacent side, that's 4 fifths, squared minus 1. We'll spell it all out, so that'll be 16. The square of 5 will be 25 minus 1. That means I've got 32 20 fifths, but take away another 25 20 fifths for that 1, and that's going to leave me with 7 20 fifths. <coughs> 7 20 fifths, answer A. Number six, a little expression, it's already in index form. And you want to differentiate it. Well, it's all ready to go. So just multiply by the power. Two threes are six, so I've got negative six. Take one off the power. Negative two goes back down to negative three. Multiply by the power, so that's three upon two times two. Take one off the power, drops down to a half. So that's negative six x to negative three. That cancels down just to plus three x to the power of half. <coughs> Check it, what is it? And it is negative 6x plus uh, negative 6x to negative 3 plus 3 to the half is C. Number 7. If u equals this and v equals that and they're perpendicular, oh, well that means that u dot v must equal 0. So that means that negative 3, 1, 2, t dot 1, t negative 1 equals 0. Multiplying out the corresponding components. Negative 3 times 1, negative 3. 1 times t, t. Negative 1 times 2t, negative 2t should equal 0. So that says negative 3, negative t is 0. Take that over, read it backwards. t equals negative 3. t equals negative 3. Answer A. Number 8. 
volume given by this expression, rate of change, that's the derivative. The rate of change of V with respect to R is just differentiate it with respect to R. R is the variable, so it's just multiply by the power. So 3 times, oh, I'll spell it out, 3 times 4 upon 3, 1 off the power, that drops down to the 3's cancel, 4 pi R squared. Work it out at 2, <coughs> well that means it will be 4 pi times 2 squared, R is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 fours are 16, so it's 16 pi. 16 pi is answer C. Question 9. First one that made me hesitate after quite an easy start. Those first eight questions were just a matter of a few seconds each. Right, it's a shifted cosine graph. They're all cosines, so what's happened to it? Well, I've drawn this over here, just to I didn't really need to do that. Cosine should have looked like this, starting at 1, dropping down, coming back up again. So what's happened to it? What's been shifted forward? Shifting forward pi up in 6, so I could say that it's going pi up in 6 forward, and then it's been dropped down. It should have been 1 below, it's now going 2 below. So 1 forward, and then 1 down. So the equation would be y equals cos of x. If it goes pi up in 6 forward, then you'd write minus pi up in 6 in there, but going 1 down is 1 down. Minus pi up in 6, minus 1, answer A. Question 10, vectors 1. You've got this um, square base pyramid, and you define the vector representing the displacement R to P, so you can only travel along, that was like a wire frame, you can only travel along these wires. Starting at R, finishing at P, but only travelling along lines that you know the direction of. But since the bottom, so you know that F is the same for both of those, and G is the same for both of those, but there's only one H. Those other lines that lead to P are different, they're in different directions, so there's only one way up. You're going to have to make your way to T and then climb up H. So which way are you going to make your, T, your way to T from R? You can either go this way, that's against a G and then against an F, or you can go that way. Oh, it doesn't matter which I'll go that way. So starting at R, I'm going to go, would be the same as F, only it's the opposite way. So I'm going to go against an F, against the flow again, against the G, and then finally get swept up the escalator there, plus an H. So which one's that? I've got negative F, negative G, plus HB. Number 10, 